Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. John Belkowitz, and we're doing some Q&A today. We have some awesome YouTube comments with questions and wanted to get to those. One from Mr. McTeen, who's coming from Australia. Great exponent. Ding! Ding! Can't forget the dings. Ding! Great explanation. If you had to give a simplified explanation to a group of full-time season contractors, the posilonic reaction of chlorosilica with the minerals used in concrete will just say the phases developed in concrete. How would you explain it? I've tried, and the reaction is always blank faces. Cheers, Mick. All right, Mick. Um, so, uh, yeah, I had to explain, uh, you know, my, my PhD to my dad, and that's really when I knew I understood what I was working on. It was probably one of the, the toughest parts of my PhD truly understanding it to explain it in a variety of methods. So let's call this explanation one, ding! And if this doesn't work, Mick, let me know and I can go through other explanations. So how does colloidal silica um, give a simplified explanation uh, to a group the posilonic reaction of colloidal silica with the minerals used in concrete? Now. Mick, when it comes down to it, posilonic reaction is not limited to the nanosilica sized particles in colloidal silica. So let's just go on posilonic reaction using what's in concrete. Now, posilonic reaction comes from, you know, the Italian Latin version of, or this town, Posoli, where we got our volcanic ash that was mixed with slaked lime to give us our earliest forms of concrete. There's a great book written by the Triumph of Concrete, the Roman Pantheon, by uh, I think it's David Moore. Fantastic book. We'll put a link in the section below. Ding! So that gives a whole description of where the, 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 the term posilonic comes from, but scientifically it's a consumption of a byproduct of cement hydration to make more of the calcium silicate hydrate that backbone of concrete strength. Now the way that I would describe that is concrete is made up of a number of things, right? We can boil it down to and, and simplify it if we wanted to to three things, right? Four things. Rock, sand, cement, and water. Right? There's some air involved, but let's ignore that for a second. Now, the two that we're concerned with here is cement and water. Now, when you mix cement and water, you get something called a hydraulic reaction. Now, that term shouldn't, you know, scare anybody because most people know that that hydraulic concept, and if they don't know, it's easy to let them know. It's, it's a reaction that's based on water. So when you add water to cement, it starts reacting. It starts kicking off heat. And one of those chemical reactions kicks off something called calcium hydroxide. You can actually buy this from your local warehouse or, or your local, um, uh, what's it called, uh, hardware store. Um, it's called lime, Portland dye, but lime, it comes in bags and you use it in soils, you use it in mortars, um, but that calcium hydroxide, that lime, is one of the ingredients to make up that glue, or what I call that backbone of concrete strength for strength and durability development. Now, the chemical name of that superhero of concrete strength is calcium silicate hydrate. Let's just call it the superhero of concrete strength, or even CSH. I like superhero of concrete strength. That stuff that we can get in the bag, that lime, we're going to call it the cancer of concrete neither bonds to itself nor anything else in the presence of water, that lime will dissolve in solution. By using that posilonic material, whether it's colloidal silica, fly ash, silica fume, it consumes that calcium hydroxide, that lime, that cancer of concrete, to make more of the superhero of concrete strength. That which gives us strength, that's that which gives us durability, the CSH or calcium silicate hydrate. Now, it doesn't do it real quickly. 
And what the Romans found out is it takes them a long time to combine that pozzolanic ash with the slate lime, which they had back in the day, to make that, that material that gives us the Roman pantheon, you know, concrete structure that's 2,500 plus years old. Now that being said, despite the fact that it was stronger, it lasted longer, it also took a very long time to hydrate. So when you compare the cementitious or cement reactions with the pozzolanic reactions to create that same superhero of concrete strength, it takes a lot longer for pozzolanic reaction than it does for the cement reaction. So hopefully that helps you out. If it doesn't, let me know and I can help you with another explanation. Go concrete! Readers first!